ship to ship combat is probably one of the most horrifying um, examples of battle that you can imagine because you're on a steel ship and when a steel ship gets hit by shells that steel either melts and shoots all over the place in shards or you're encased in it, it you're, you're down in the engine room if it goes down you're trapped in it so I mean it's the it's, the, the, it's pretty um, it's pretty serious the ways in which a, a person could get killed on one back then on one of these things. I do renderings of combat vessels that were involved in the Pacific War during World War II, both American and Japanese. Uh, from aircraft carriers and battleships down to destroyers. I consider them kind of like historical documents because I try to make them as close. There's no, there's no way I'll ever get 100%, but I uh, try to get as close as possible. And if, there's, if I do research on a vessel and I don't have enough information, I think, to actually draw it, um, then I won't pursue it until I get the information that I compiled that I feel I need to do it. And then there are certain ships that I am, are not, either am not compelled to do at this point, like the Arizona and a couple of others. Because they'll be pretty emotional and, and I don't want to give the impression that I'm trying to profit off of it. So I just draw them at random. Some of them famous, some of them not so famous, some of them completely unknown but they were all they were all there so my grandfather during World War II was a fabricator welder he didn't go he was too old to be conscripted so so he was he just worked as a welder now uh, electrolysis welding electrical or arc welding was only formulated 10 years prior to that in the early 30s so he was pretty good at his craft uh, at, during the war so he was a subcontractor to actual shipyards there's a camaraderie on a naval ship that I've never felt other than the time that I was on my ship and I was in peacetime I wasn't in wartime so I can only imagine the camaraderie in wartime but um, there's a, when it when it comes down to it, when it comes down to it, everybody comes together. You're one. You're one ship operating as one unit. I can understand why those guys want to be interred at the Arizona to be with their buddies. because they probably never felt the camaraderie other than there either. That's why. The first large ships that I drew, I drew in prison. But they were inaccurate because I didn't have any information and I only went from memory what they actually looked like. I would use my bunk or my rack, as they call it in the Navy, as a drawing board because they took the springs and everything that could be made into a weapon off of it and welded a steel plate onto it. So it was a perfect, it was, you know, a perfect drawing table. I had a guy who saw me working with very small pieces of paper because one of my things before I even went to prison about drawing was I'd always start on a piece of paper and then the drawing would, would be larger than the piece of paper I started on. Um, so he saw that and he said, well, I got a, I got a solution for you. And he was in, worked in the kitchen, so he brought me butcher paper. And 
of the first five that I drew in prison, one of them is 12 feet long. When you look at a crew of a ship like this, if it's a crew of 2,300, 28, I mean 1,800 of them were kids under the age of 22. A lot of them came back damaged and with loss of life. And so it, you know, it's, it's kind of a memorial to them. I mean, if it's accurate, whoever's looking at it, their relatives or just historians or whoever's looking at it, um, can feel it. I mean, every time I draw a ship, at some point, what you usually when I hang it up to proportion it because it's here you can see it's rolled up. <laughs> That's a very small area, but when I proportion it, I unroll the entire thing and I put it up so I can make sure it's right. And um, I reflect, I reflect on where that ship was, I reflect on the period that I'm trying to depict. And uh, in that process, uh, I sometimes weep when I drew the, uh, the Astoria that my dad's cousin was killed on in Astoria. Um, I got hit by that one when I was proportioning, but I had just gotten off the computer and found out where his name was actually inscribed, which is the largest um, U.S. military burial ground outside of the U.S. It's in Manila. And he's on, I believe it's panel 18. When I feel inside that I've captured the ship and its essence enough for the crew of that ship to say, okay, this representation is our ship. It makes me feel more like I'm doing it for them than myself, even though I want to see the ship too. I'm doing it for them.